Hey guys, this is Mr. Grace for Algebra Unit 7, Review B. Remember to complete only one column of this review, the front and the back, show all your work, and to circle your final answers. Now, I am going to be doing the regular side, okay? So, first one says to classify the, the following polynomial by degree and number of terms. And I know right away just by looking at that, that it's not written in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this and see if I can combine any like terms. So first, negative 8x cubed. There's nothing that I can combine that with. So negative 8x cubed. Then we have the plus 6x squared. And once again, that's all by itself. And then last, I've got 2x, oh, but I have 7x too. 2x plus 7x is 9x. Now, the first thing we need to do is decide if it's constant, linear, quadratic, or cubic. And we look at the highest degree, and that tells me that this is a cubic. And now I'm going to look at the number of terms, and I have 1, 2, three terms, which means it's a trinomial. So the name of this is a cubic trinomial. Okay, number two says to find the difference. Okay, always look to see what operation, subtraction. To get rid of the parentheses, remember we need to distribute. And in the front, we're going to distribute a positive one which means everything stays the same. But in the back, we need to distribute a negative 1. So negative times a positive makes it a negative 8x cubed, a negative 3x squared, and a negative times a negative is positive 11. And now just like we did in number one, we're going to combine like terms. So the first is the negative 8x cubed, and that's all by itself. Then we're looking at the squares and positive 3x squared and negative 3x squared. Those cancel. So then we have our negative 7x, and that's all by itself. And then the last one would be 11 plus 11, and 11 plus 11 is 22. So our final answer is negative 8x cubed minus 7x squared plus 22. Okay, number three says to find the product. Now, I know that I cannot do that the exponent tells me how many of the bases we have, which means we really have 4x minus 9 times 4x minus 9. And now what we do is distribute. So 4 times 4 is 16, and x times x gives us x squared. 4x times negative 9 is negative 36x. Once again, negative 9 times 4x is negative 36x. And then negative 9 times negative 9 is a positive 81. Okay. And then that next step would be to combine our like terms in the middle, which leaves us 16x squared. Negative 36 and negative 36 is a negative 72x plus 81. Okay, number four. Number four, once again, we're going to distribute. And I'm going to use the box method here. I have a binomial times a trinomial. So I'm going to put my binomial on the side. And then the x squared minus 4x plus 1. And now we're just going to go ahead and multiply 6x times x squared gives us 6x cubed. 6x times negative 4x is a negative 
x squared. 6x times 1 gives me a positive 6x. 3 times x squared is a positive 3x squared. Positive 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12x. And then 3 times 1 is positive 3. Okay, and now let's look for our like terms. We have the negative 24 and the positive 3x squared, and the negative 12 and the positive 6x. So when we combine our like terms, we're left with a positive 6x cubed. Negative 24 and positive 3 gives us a negative 21x squared. Negative 12 and positive 6 is a oops, negative 6x. And then the positive 3 is all by itself. OK, number 5 and 6, the directions say to factor if possible. So let's first look at the numbers, negative 48 and 6. Is there a number that goes into both of those? There is. It's 6. Now, the only thing that I have to watch out for is my leading coefficient is negative. Therefore, no matter what, my GCF is negative. So I'm going to pull out a negative 6. And now let's look at the variables. Let's look at the x x's first. The least amount that I have is just 1x, so that's all I can factor out. Now let's look at the y squared, where they're both y squared, so that means I can factor out the y squared. And then they both also have a z, so I can factor out the z. Now, the GCF comes out front. It does not disappear, guys. And then after that, we write our remainder inside. So negative 48 divided by negative 6 is a positive 8. x squared divided by x is x. And then the y's and the z's, those both cancel out. And now positive 6xy squared z divided by negative 6xy squared z. Well, all of the variables cancel out. And then we're left with positive 6 divided by negative 6, which gives us a negative 1. So our final answer is negative 6xy squared z times 8x minus 1. Okay, number 6. We have a quadratic trinomial. The first thing we always do is check to see if there's a GCF. And in this case, there isn't. So that means I need to multiply 5 times 21, which is 105. Okay, so what are the factors of 105? Well, it's always 1 and the number. And then you need to check 2. 2 doesn't work. Check 3. It's 3 and 35. We just did 5 times 21. And then six, nope, seven, yep, seven and 15. And then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, none of those work. Okay, so in this set, we're looking for numbers that multiply to a negative 105 and add to get to negative eight. And out of those, it's only seven, and 15, except one of them has to be negative. And it's going to be the 15 because we need a negative 8. OK? So we're going to go ahead and split the middle term. I'm going to move this off to the side for a little bit so I have more room to work. So we have 5x squared plus 7x minus 15x minus 21. All right, so looking at the first group, the only thing I can factor out is an x. So the x comes out front, and our remainder is 5x 
plus 7. And now I'm going to take the GCF of the back. My leading coefficient is negative, so my GCF is negative. And then what goes into 15 and 21? And that's 3. So the negative 3 comes out front. And then negative 15 divided by negative 3 is a positive 5x. And negative 21 divided by negative 7, or negative 3, is a positive 7. And if you look, we did it right because those match. So our final answer is 5x plus 7 times x minus 3. Okay, let's go ahead and flip it over. So let's find either the area or perimeter, whichever is appropriate for the situation described. Brittany's yard is 8x by 1 feet by 4x plus 5 feet. She wants to plant new sod, or that's grass, in her yard. Does she need to find the area or perimeter in order to find uh, out how much sod she needs to buy? And then we have to find it if x equals 9 feet. So. Here's her yard. So if she's planting grass, grass is all the inside. And so the inside, that means we need to find the area. Okay. So one side is 8x plus 1 feet. And the other is 4x plus 5. So, so I'm finding the area, that means I need to multiply those two guys. So we have 8x plus 1 times 4x plus 5, and that's going to be our formula. And to solve, we need to distribute. 8 times 4 is 32x squared. 8 times 5 gives us 40x. 1 times 4 is 4x, and 1 times 5 is 5. Go ahead and combine your like terms, and then we get a formula of a equals 32x squared plus 44x plus 5 feet squared. So that's our area. Now, don't forget the next part. It tells you to find it if x equals 9. Okay? So we're going to use that formula, 32x squared plus 44x plus 5. And we're plugging in 9. Now, you can just plug this into your calculator and solve it, but I'm going to go through and do all the work. So, order of operations, we have to do exponents first. So, 9 squared is 81. Okay? The next step would be, would be multiplic blah, 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 blah. multiplication. So, we have to do 32 times 81, which is 2,592 plus... 44 times 9, which is 396 plus 5. Okay? So when we're done with that and we add all those numbers up, you should get a grand total of 2,993. And remember, we're talking about area, so it's feet squared. Okay? So we had two answers for number 7. All right, and number eight says to find the dimensions of the rectangle below. So if Renee wants to frame a rectangular picture. So frame a rectangular picture whose area is 2x cubed plus 13x plus 6 centimeters squared. In order to do so, she needs to know its dimensions. Find the dimensions of her picture. Okay, so... She's got this picture, and we know that the area equals that 2x cubed plus 13x plus 6. 
okay? And if we want to find out what these two sides are, what we have to do is we have to factor it, okay? So we have 2x cubed, or squared, I'm sorry, plus 13x plus 6. So is there a GCF? Nope. So that means we're going to multiply those two numbers. 2 times 6 is 12. The factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And out of those, we're looking for numbers that multiply to get to 12, but add to get to 13. And there's only one set that does that, and that's 1 times 12. And then 1 plus 12. So we're going to go ahead and split the middle term. We get 2x squared plus 1x plus 12x plus 6. Okay, so the GCF of the front is an x, and we pull the x out front. And when we divide, we're left with 2x plus 1. Okay, and the GCF of the back is a positive 6. The 6 comes out front. 12 divided by 6 is 2x, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. And did we do it right? We sure did. So our answer would be 2x plus 1 plus x plus 6. Now, the only thing is they wanted the dimensions. So the only thing that would be different about our answer here is we would write that the dimensions are 2x plus 1 centimeters by x plus 6 centimeters. And that's our final answer. Okay. Now, if you need any other questions or need extra help, please come see me or Ms. Kranza. And if you guys are working on a flip book and you want to write any of these problems down, please go ahead and do so. And then if you look, oh man, all the answers were there the entire time. Guess what? I already checked. We got them all right. So if you want more of a challenge, go ahead and do the harder version to help make sure you're ready for that test. Okay. Well, this is Mr. Geis signing off. Algebra 1, Unit 7 Review. Thanks for watching.